Wow! <laughs> Hello everybody! You see, I got a new light name. It looks so nice. My name is Mar <laughs> my name is Marina and I'm a certified information systems auditor with Tech News. Today we're gonna talk about the data leak prevention technology, which is such a hot topic considering that data privacy and cybersecurity were voted one of the highest risk areas based on 2019 survey to be included into 2020 audit plan. So in this video, we will cover what this technology entails, how it works in the enterprise IT infrastructure and associated risks and controls. So without further ado, let's go. TLP technologies aim to prevent the unauthorized disclosure of sensitive data through its detection, monitoring and protection. We should be able to distinguish between three different states of data, mainly data at rest, data in transit or in motion, and data in use. Okay, so let's consider a simple example of a manufacturing organization. Let's say in this organization we have uh, just a few departments. We have manufacturing department, supply chain department, and finances department. Let's say that in manufacturing we have some data that is generated within the department, such as production volumes, maintenance schedule, spare part inventory, purchase requests. This we will call data at rest. Uh, it means that they are inactive data that are stored somewhere on the manufacturing departmental network drives, database server, or any other digital form, even like spreadsheets or other documents. Uh, now let's say that manufacturing department needs to purchase something and it sends a purchase request to the supply chain department. Supply chain department in turn finds appropriate supplier that provides its supply details to the supply chain department, which in turn provides these details to the finance department. Here I highlighted an example of data in motion that are active data sent over the protected private organizational network, like between manufacturing and supply chain, the supply chain and finance department. Now let's say that suppliers send an invoice to the finance department, which then sends a payment order to the bank. And, this we, and here we have another example of uh, data in motion that is sent over the unprotected network to the external third parties. Here we have also example of uh, data in use. I, um, data in use. What I mean is when suppliers provide to us their details, um, the recipient eventually temporarily holds this information as part of random access memory or CPU cache or registers. Now that we have a basic understanding of the data states, let's examine the two types of data leak prevention technology, mainly the network DLP and the endpoint DLP. The most important difference between these two is that the endpoint DLP uh, is associated with the data at rest or data in use, while the network DLP is more associated with the data in transit. To better understand how the two types of DLP work within the IT infrastructure, let's throw here a very simple organizational network diagram. Let's say we have a couple of computer users, a mobile user, maybe a database server, a switch, firewall, Wi-Fi router, and let's indicate the internet. Without the DLP solutions, the traffic from the computer users will go through the switch and firewall out to the internet. The traffic from mobile users connected to the wireless network will go through the Wi-Fi router, firewall, out to the internet and let the switch also communicate with the server. Now these are not the rules just for the sake of this example. Now in case the company deployed the endpoint DLP it will inspect the data at rest located on end user devices. This is done by so-called crawlers that are essentially a piece of software appliance that crawls into each endpoint device located in a corporate network aiming to detect the sensitive data, gather the information about it and maybe even even encrypt it and send alerts in case of non-compliance with corporate data protection policies. In eDLP deployment model, companies may also install so-called DLP agents that will help to detect the sensitive data at the point of generation, as well as detect and log such activities as copy, paste, send or print. These agents then send these logs to the NDLP for future traffic monitoring. Traffic from other devices 
without the installed agents is going through the NDLP, which has the capabilities to allow it, block it, and other options like audit, forward, notify, or quarantine. Okay, great. Now that we are familiar with the data states and DLP types, let's talk risks. The first risk we're going to discuss is the improperly placed NDLP. If the DLP network module is not properly placed within the IT infrastructure, there may be a risk that certain sensitive data will not be inspected as shown in this slide. It is important to understand the data flow paths and install the DLP modules at the latest point when data leaves the organizational network. Another risk is the improperly configured DLP. Should the NDLP be improperly configured, it may unjustifiably block communication sessions, in other words, suffer from excessive false positive activities, or on the contrary, it may miss the valid threats. This may result in various consequences, such as disruption of critical business processes, waste of staff time, revenue losses, reputational damages, and so on. This is why it is very important that the DLP technology uh, be thoroughly tested before going live. It is also a good practice to first launch it in a read-only mode, so that no content blocking actually occurs. This way you could monitor where the NDLP needs more tuning and corrections. It may also allow users some time to adjust their practices in case of non-compliance with the new DLP policies. And good to limit as much as possible the use of standard and DLP templates that are la uh, less customizable and to use uh, customizable modules that the organization can adjust to its specific data privacy data privacy needs and here's another piece of advice in case you're doing a pre-implementation review First, depending on the size of the organization, sensitive data volume, traffic and corresponding NDLP sizing, consider a phased implementation, starting with the highest risk areas. And as a soft preventive control, it is also good to involve stakeholders at an early stage before launching the DLP technology. Explain to them why it is important to implement it, how it is expected to work, and what issues they may face after it is launched. It will help a lot to avoid user resistance and frustrations after the go-live dates. Another risk is incorrect size of the NDLP modules. The NDLP installed within the company's network should be able to handle the passing traffic in order to be effective. It, if it is unable to handle the big amount of traffic coming through the NDLP, then some data packets may be missed or dropped and thus will not be inspected for the compliance with the data protection policies. This should be considered during the design phase of the NDLP mm, solution, uh, as well as continuously monitored after the launch dates uh, in case the traffic volume increases. DLP systems may have an impact on the performance of other systems. This is another risk. So DLP appliances like crawlers and agents need to be thoroughly tested before deployment. Ideally, organizations should deploy a separate test environment for DLP appliances. As mitigating control, organizations should check with the vendor about the known conflicts and vulnerabilities. DLP appliances, as any other piece of software, should be properly configured patched and upgraded. For example, DLP crawlers should be tuned in a way as to avoid activating the crawlers during the business peak hours. Once DLP is implemented in the company, it is important to ensure that it is not gone ineffective due to different organizational changes. Thus, any changes that may affect the performance of the DLP should go through the formal change management process to avoid system degradation. It is also recommended that a DLP system administrator be involved in change management process to ensure that the changes do not circumvent any of the DLP controls. Another risk, uh, as with any other system, is system failure. DLP systems may fail for one reason or another without proper notification to the system administrator. As a mitigating control, you may recommend to establish a schedule for regular system testing to ensure that it is still performing as expected. Another risk is the inability to trace um, violations identified by the NDLP to the end users. It is recommended that before implementing the NDLP solution, organizations establish that the automated directory services, so NDLP may receive data on users' accesses and addresses.
If such directory services are not in place or not well established, it could be challenging for the organization to trace the violations back to the end users. So that's it for today. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you like it, please subscribe to my channel. And if you have any questions, feel free to write in the comments. I will reply to everyone. And um, I'll see you in the next video.